This video will discuss what the Clinical Key Database is and how best to use it for your research needs. The wonderful thing about Clinical Key is that it has just about everything. Of course, this is also the super frustrating part. There is just so much, and searching it can be an exercise in aggravation. But there really is no other source owned by the library that can search this much health information at once. And we'll cover strategies to make the searching easier. It's important to mention that Clinical Key was created primarily for physicians, so there isn't a ton of content specific to nursing or other allied health fields. Even so, you can still find a lot of useful information. You're not going to search clinical key for every single research need you have. Sometimes it's just too much. But here are some of the top reasons why I search it. Believe it or not, I'm actually not a healthcare provider, just a librarian who serves awesome healthcare folks. I get a lot of questions on topics that I know nothing about, so I need to get up to speed before I can help anyone. With all the textbooks and clinical key, it's very easy to get background information on a topic. And I'm going to demo this in a minute, but when you need an impressive image, chart, or a diagram for a PowerPoint, clinical key can really deliver. And clinical key has over 500 full text journals. So if you need a PDF article on topic and you needed it like five minutes ago, it's a great place to start. Like many searching resources, clinical key is trying to be like Google by keeping their main search screen simple. You can run a search here and search all their resources at once, or you can immediately limit by selecting the all types. We're going to start big here and not choose any limiters, at least not yet. So let's say we need to do research on cardiomyopathy. I'm just going to go ahead and start typing it in, and Clinical Key is going to try to read my mind and determine what it thinks I really want to find. Cardiomyopathy is listed here, but there's a lot of other ways to get more specific. Again, I'm just going to keep it broad for now. And if what you search on is fairly common, you will see something called a disease overview come up. And in this case, it's got two things listed. We have the Ferry's Clinical Advisor, which is a textbook, and there's also something called First Consult. The Ferry's Clinical Advisor will give you an overview of the various conditions. You can limit directly to a specific aspect of that, or you can just read through the whole topic. First Consult is similar to that, except it's a little more in depth. It allows you to read through the whole topic again if you would like to do so, or you can jump directly to something like diagnosis or screening. And for those of you who have ever used Dynamed or UpToDate, First Consult is very similar to those. And depending on the topic, you might also have something over on the right hand side like related drugs, patient education, you have the ability to select the latest articles, and related guidelines. Pretty cool. But if you want more than what is listed here, or you want something more specific, you can go ahead and select more results. Depending on your topic, you could see a few hundred results to tens of thousands of results. In this case, we have almost 25,000, and that is way more than any sane person is ever going to get through. Fear not, not all is lost. We can use these amazing limiters and filters up at the top to make things more specific. You can limit by the source type, the study type, specialties, date, and they also have this feature where you can sort by relevance or you can sort by the date published. We're going to start over here on source type. Uh, these will vary depending on what you've typed in. These are going to be the main things you'll see. The first thing you'll see is full text articles. This limits to the full text journals available here in Clinical Key. This is not the whole universe of journals. This is just the 500 or so Elsevier titles included in Clinical Key. If you need a PDF immediately, it's a great place to start. Okay, so this gives me 12,000 still, again, way too many to search through. But you can start moving over here toward the right and limiting it even further. So we will limit by study type. There's two ways to do this. It lists either systematic reviews or narrative reviews. A systematic review is sort of the cream of the crop when it comes to evidence-based information. A narrative review is not the same. It's important to be able to distinguish the two. A narrative review is just an overview. It will bring in some of the most important research on a topic, but it's not going to include all of it, which is what a systematic review does. But a narrative re review is a really great place to start if you're new to a topic. Okay, we're down to 833 results, still uh, too many. Okay, so you can narrow by specialty as well. This is a really nice feature that helps you narrow in on a particular topic area. Or you can narrow in on date. 
Very nice, because usually you're going to want the most recent information. I'm just going to keep it broad for now because I see something that I'm really interested in here right at the top. And there's a full text article called Cardiomyopathies, Classification, Diagnosis, and Treatment. In order to bring that up, I just clicked on the title, and from here you can read the entire article, or you can just select the PDF and download and save the PDF or print it out from there. All right, I'm going to go back to the results, and I'm going to clear out these limits. The next one you'll see is something called Medline Abstracts. This includes all of the data from PubMed. I rarely use this because it's a lot easier to search this information by directly going to PubMed. The images, this is a super cool feature. These are images pulled from all the content in Clinical Key, all the articles, textbooks, and so on. And it's not only a great way to get more information, especially if you're more of a visual learner. What a lot of people use this for is if they need a professional image for a presentation or something similar, all you need to do is click on the image and then you add it to your presentation. Do need to be logged in to Clinical Key to do this. In order to create a login, you just need to go up to the login and register. Really easy, it's free. Just create a username and password and you'll be good to go. But once you've added this to your presentation maker, then you can export it directly into PowerPoint. It's really cool. The next source type we're gonna look at is the books. And I focus on textbooks a lot when I search clinical key, so I'll frequently limit to books. It's gonna have a lot. Again, there's more than 1,100 full text textbooks in clinical key, so not surprisingly, you're gonna see a lot here. And the way that it usually brings it up is it'll bring up a specific book chapter, which is really convenient so you don't have to browse through the whole book looking for your topic. There's a couple of ways to limit when you're searching on books. The first way is actually just to look through the title list. The book chapter is what's listed first, and then the book title is listed in the smaller text. So you can just start browsing through and seeing what book titles are relevant to your topic. Maybe you're focusing on emergency medicine. If so, that might be a great topic. And just like with the journals, you can limit to specialty and you can limit by date. Let's just say I want to look at this particular one. I can read the full book chapter right here from the screen or I can download the PDF. And downloading the PDFs is similar to downloading the images. You need to have created a username and password and you have to be logged in to get to the PDF. All right, let's move to our next source type, which is clinical trials. This is an interesting feature because it searches a freely available database called clinicaltrials.gov and it allows you to see what research is currently being done that might not yet be published. The guidelines provides really great overview information on a topic, and videos can be hit or miss. Sometimes there's some great ones, and sometimes less than great. And of course, with anything cardiac, we're gonna be seeing a lot of echocardiograms, angiograms, and so on. First consult, again, is just an overview, really similar to Dynamed or Up To Date great if you're just getting started with something. And if you work with any patients or are involved in patient care of any kind, the patient education feature is helpful as it explains over 15,000 different topics in an easy to understand and easy to read language. The drug monograph feature will bring up information about the medications that are commonly associated with this disease or condition. And that's about it for searching clinical key. There is a lot of content but many ways to make it manageable. And for those of you who are familiar with PubMed or CINAHL or similar article databases, you may be used to creating really fancy searches and combining terms and using subject headings. Clinical Key works best with a more simplified approach. You can add additional keywords, but don't use a ton of them and don't expect to see some of the more sophisticated search features that the other sources include. You can also browse some of what Clinical Key includes. To do that, we'll go back to the main page, and under here it lists Browse. So again, I love Clinical Key for the books because there's so many of them. This is sort of a limited search because it's only searching by the title. It's not looking for abstracts or subject headings or anything like that. So you actually have to either know the exact title or hope your topic appears in the title. So if you do know the exact title, go ahead and search for it here, or you can browse. But say, maybe you're interested in knowing if Clinical Key has books on a certain subject area. Um, an example might be in sleep medicine. So let's just start typing sleep. And here's everything in the books that has the word sleep in the title. Again, this is only where it appears in the title. So if there are book chapters in other books, 
that talk about sleep medicine, that won't come up. A way to find that is to go up to all types, select books, and just search on sleep medicine. You can also browse journals. Same thing, it's only looking at the title. So if you happen to know the exact title you're looking for, great. Or like if we're looking for a topic like sleep medicine, you can type that in. And these are the journals that have sleep in the title. And there's one last feature that did not come up with the cardiomyopathy search that we did, and that is listed under all types. It's something called procedures consult. I'm just going to type in the procedure intubation. The procedures consult feature has about 300 different procedures either in video or in handout form that will take you step by step through a lot of common medical procedures. So in this case, say we want to look at nasogastric intubation, here's actually full videos on how to go through the whole process. Very nice. Sometimes this is a much better way to learn things than actually trying to read about it. Okay, so a quick overview of clinical key. You can search all of it by just putting your search in here and clicking on the little magnifying glass, or you can immediately limit if you only want to find books, full text journals, multimedia, and so on. And don't be discouraged if you get a ton of stuff at first. That's going to be normal because there's so much in here. You can always add terms to your search, or you can use those great limiters. And if you're doing any kind of health-related research, you need to be searching clinical key. Don't hesitate to contact the ISU Library Health Sciences staff if you need any help.